so I was looking at diagrams of dinosaur skeletons and a few things occurred to me here so this is Coelophysis however the hell you want to pronounce that um, this animal the way that it they present its motion here always confused me because where is its its center of gravity is like back here somewhere what that doesn't seem right also what is this big protrusion of the pelvis doing here and why is this shoulder girdle so strong and massive compared to the the limbs here this skeleton actually looks like overall a quadrupedal lizard that can run like it, it actually looks very similar in many many regards to the skeleton of a, like a basilisk that can get up on its back two legs and run but in general goes around at all fours in contrast this is a skeleton of an animal that primarily goes on all fours notice how small the, the rear pelvis is this anchor point for the rear muscles are on the pelvis and how big this shoulder girdle is which definitely carries the weight of this animal and this is a much much bigger animal but look at that like proportionally this is very similar actually but proportionally this is also very similar look, look at that very similar so these are this is probably not an obligate quadruped but generally a quadruped and you can tell that by the structure of the forearms for sure these are definitely weight bearing arms and you can also see from the the structure of the pelvis here nothing is coming down to the belly right so this animal is supporting its weight primarily on its legs pretty much all the time here this guy his pelvis is coming to his belly which probably indicates that he's laying on his belly a lot this is typical of like crocodilians lizards the pelvis comes pretty much down close to uh, the belly there and supports the body so that the legs don't have to and in these animals notice also the angle of this plate that that the muscles anchor to it's not vertical it's it's slightly tilted so that it's uh, it's past vertical it's like a well it's it's like sloping down from the spine to the joint with the pelvis or, or with the femur which indicates to me that the legs will have a tendency to splay out generally not necessarily too much like we do have some tracks of these animals so we know that they could walk very much uh, upright but that doesn't mean that they always did in contrast if the here the this the the plane of this is much more vertical or like tilted in a little bit so that it actually anchors the muscles more appropriately to a vertical position for the leg now looking at a t-rex this actually behaves very similarly this is structured very very much more similar to the coelophysis we have this bizarrely large shoulder girdle here which looks like it's designed to bear weight 
And we also have this pelvis here, <clears throat> which looks like it's designed to bear weight. And the um, up here, these muscle attachments look like they're designed to handle the legs splaying out to some degree. Also, the way these ribs are coming out, that indicates that generally the animal is... Like, this looks very strange. Like, why do you have these narrow hips here? This really narrow tail, but this fat belly. It's kind of weird. It seems like it would be a little more natural if the legs splayed out a little bit more. And why is the belly able to bear the full weight of the animal? This is... What is this? What is this huge thing right here? This looks like it's designed to bear the weight of the animal when it's laying on its belly. Which means it is probably doing that a lot. In contrast here, we have a sauropod. Look at how big this shoulder is. Like, this is a very large animal. So this is huge. But proportionally, if we go back, like, proportionally this compared to this, it's remarkably similar. This whole thing here, compared to this little tiny arm, is very similar to this big guy compared to this arm. This part, not so much. But the fact that this extends all the way up like this, it floats up to the same point. Indicates that this is probably doing something similar to that. But then if we look at something like Velociraptor, this arm is not weight-bearing at all. Or, very rarely. This is basically a wing. Most likely. Um, and, if we had a view from the top of the pelvis, which we don't, you can see that this act, it's, it's structured very much like a bird's pelvis, much more like a bird's pelvis, uh, designed for standing upright. The, the legs are definitely held pretty much straight up and down. And this pelvis is turned back. So it's not holding the, the weight of the body anymore. Um, this is what this is probably doing. This is probably anchoring muscles to support this wing-like arm um, for something, probably not flight, but um, perhaps gliding or uh, ground effect or something like that. Also notice that the tail is stiffened. So these, these bones here, uh, after well, and, and these little protrusions that would be the ribs, analogous to the ribs, come straight back. So this is all stiffened right here, like a big rudder. And really only these, these few uh, vertebrae behind the pelvis are able to articulate. That's very different from Psilophysis. And... It's actually kind of similar to this, to this uh, Parasaurolophus, um, but it's very different from T-Rex. It's very different from this sauropod. So, this animal, Velociraptor, and its close relatives, are certainly behaving very differently, and walking very differently. The way that they're moving is very different from the way this guy is moving, and the way this guy is moving, and the way this guy is moving. But classically, what we get is a depiction of this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, all moving and walking around in basically exactly the same manner. I don't see how that makes sense. <laughs> like, we do have tracks from all of these. Um, tracks for these these sorts of animals they they do uh, often exhibit four-legged locomotion uh, quadru quadrupedal locomotion 
um, tracks for these guys that we have indicate bipedal locomotion, which indicates that they could do that, but I'm skeptical that that's what they always did, or even primarily did. I don't know if we have track. Yeah, I think we have tracks for Velociraptor. Definitely bipedal. And you can, you can really tell from that skeleton. This is not, this is not weight bearing. This is anchoring muscles, right? So this is coming back and this is coming back. These are both to hold muscles, to lift the, the arm and to pull the arm down. So it's doing something, it's doing movements very similar to flight. Um, it's using the aerodynamic properties of the wings on its arms for something. Very different from what's happening here. This is just pretty much bearing the weight. This looks like it's weight bearing. But why would it need to be weight bearing if Tyrannosaurus is bipedal? And this is unique among all of these this this big base to this this bone here this is unique in the in the tyrannosaurids it's not present here this dude's quadrupedal pretty much always on his feet this dude's quadrupedal pretty much always on his feet and his pelvis doesn't do that although there is this kind of on the back end so like when it can like maybe sit down or something this is gonna bear some of that weight here you have this part coming out in the front this is a much smaller animal so it's not as heavy not as much of a problem but this is probably bearing some of the weight when it's uh, when it's laying down on its belly and just relaxing or basking you know you know, these guys were probably warm-blooded. Um, allegedly, they were warm-blooded, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't have enjoyed basking in the sun. Many mammals certainly do. Um, and birds. My birds love to sit in the sun. My rabbits love to sit in the sun. Right? The fact that you're warm-blooded doesn't mean you want to be cold and all the time. Um... Yeah, no, I, f I just found that interesting, like, looking at these, and like, it's strange that we have them all depicted with f effectively the same gait and mode of locomotion, but they, they're not built as if they have the same modes of locomotion as each other. Look at how small this is compared to this. Look at the difference there. That's crazy. And these are not radically different sized animals. Parasaurolophus is a large, large animal. This is a larger animal, but I don't think it's larger to the degree that that makes sense. Because, I mean, proportionally, like, look at this leg bone. Look, look at these these leg bones, right? Compare that here. The T-Rex legs, compared to the rest of the body, are actually smaller. They're they're lighter. They're not right. Like not by much, but proportionally, they're slightly more delicate in the T-Rex. But this muscle attachment is much, much bigger? How the hell does that make sense? There's something different going on here. And then here, this guy's huge. And his muscle, muscle attachment up here is smaller than it is for the T-Rex. Even... Yeah, even physically. It's physically smaller. If you look at the like the one meter, this is about a meter long. This is... There's a meter. 
This is like a meter and a half long. Like this is physically bigger than for this guy. This is a much bigger this is a considerably larger animal than T Rex. And here this is this is considerably smaller relative to the leg. And this leg is proportionally fairly similar actually to the T Rex. It's longer, it's more slender, it's it's a little more delicate, but Yeah, I don't know. These general leg proportions. The bones within the leg have very, very similar proportions across all of these. But, you know, all the muscle attachments in the pelvis, the structure of the pelvis, the structure of the shoulder, and the arms, those are all changing radically between each of these and the function of them. We know that the function of this thing is very different from the function of this arm. So this guy is like over 200 million years old. I think this guy is around 130 million years old. Don't, not sure about that, that one. T-Rex is like 68 to 66 million years old. Not entirely sure about this. He's, I think he's roughly contemporaneous with T-Rex. Maybe 70 million years, something like that. I don't know. It's, it's there's. It looks to me like there's more here than, than what has been claimed. Because how would they all walk the same exact way, with completely different structures, for their limbs, for the support of their limbs and the support of their their torsos. I don't know. Just, it doesn't make sense to me.